السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters, this evening we read Surah An-Nisa which is obviously dedicated to the women. One thing that is clear in the surah, Allah has repeated the issue of justice several times in the surah. Now, it is never a coincidence for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of us are guilty for not being just when it comes to our women folk, be it our wives, be it our mothers, our sisters, sometimes our daughters, and even our in-laws and so on. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a sense of justice. I want to remind you that when you came onto the earth, you came without any clothing. You were born with nothing. You owned nothing. You had nothing. You brought nothing and you came with nothing. And when you will leave, you will leave in fact with two pieces of cloth, which is a bonus from what you actually came with. When you go into your grave, they will give you an honorary two pieces of cloth, subhanallah, or three perhaps. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding that when we came, we brought nothing. When we are going to leave, we will leave with nothing besides our deeds. So this whole world is actually there for us to do as many good deeds as we can. Allah will throw into your examination women, wives, children, parents, siblings, in-laws, business partners, whoever else. Allah throws them into your test in order to see what do you do? We know what's going to happen in your life, but we want to see how you react, how you retaliate, what you do, how you are, how you develop. And this is why when it comes to laws of money, there is no other act of worship that Allah has mentioned in such great detail than that of the wealth that you leave behind when you die. Subhanallah. The detail is so, so fine that you cannot go wrong. There are very few minor differences of opinion when it comes to inheritance. So I call on you, my brothers and sisters, to learn the rules of inheritance, to learn that the money is not yours. Al-malu malullah. The wealth that you found on earth belonged to Allah. You will leave and the wealth will continue, but you might lose. Sometimes people say, I have got five sons. One was not so nice to me. So when I leave, I want to block him. Now, that's a very interesting statement because you feel perhaps that this one son was not so nice to me. Or maybe his wife wasn't a choice of mine. La ilaha illallah. When did Allah say a wife of your son should be your choice? Once someone told me, well, at the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam, he came to the door and he told that woman, tell your husband to change the doorstep. And that meant that the father was instructing his son to divorce the wife. Therefore, fathers are allowed to instruct their sons to divorce their wives. I said, no way. You are not Ibrahim alayhi salam. And that instruction was not revelation from Allah. Subhanallah. The day someone claiming to be well, you, know, you and I know prophethood is over. But when the prophet said it, Ibrahim alayhi salam, it was something different. Today, for some petty reasons, your father could tell you divorce your wife. What is right for you to do? You need to ask yourself, is my father right or is my wife right? Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu kunu qawwameena bil qisti shuhada alillah. Amazing verse. Allah says, O oh, you who believe, stand steadfast for justice, for the sake of Allah, whether it be against your own parents or your relatives, your children, whoever it may be, the rich or the poor. Sometimes people side with the rich. Have you noticed that? The rich man is always right because you know if I say he's wrong, I'm going to have a problem here. Allah says, In yakun ghaniyan aw faqira, fallahu awla bihima. Allah comes before both of them. That wealth, what is it? Allah says, rich or poor, you side with who is right. Your father, your mother. Recently, I released a little lecture where I said, who is right? Your mother or your wife? The answer is, or who do you love more? The answer is, when it comes to who is right, you've got to look at what the issue is. If your mother is wrong, 
respectfully, very kindly, you can actually correct her or you can move away in order to portray your dissatisfaction. Ibrahim alayhi salam beautifully told his father, Ya abati, inni qad ja'ani min al-ilmi ma lam ya'tik. Oh my father, I have some knowledge that did not come to you. Follow me. I'll guide you to the right path. Subhanallah. If we were to tell that to our fathers, we'd be kicked out of the house. Right? That's what happened to Ibrahim alayhi salam. He was kicked out of the whole community. They threatened him. But he said it so beautifully. Do you know what he says? Ya abati in. Oh my father, I fear that perhaps the punishment of the most merciful will get to you. Look at the look at the contrast. On one hand, he's describing Allah as Ar Rahman, the most merciful, right? And on the other hand, he's saying the punishment of the most merciful. It goes to show that Allah won't punish you in a rush. You have a chance to turn. That's what it means. You have a chance. You and I have millions of chances to turn to Allah. You did something wrong, make amends. So this is what we mean when we say, you look at who is right, who is wrong. Be it your father or your mother. Here is the verse of the Quran. We read it tonight in Surah An-Nisa, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing the matter says, that oh you who believe, stand firm for what is right, for justice, even if it's against your own parents. Who are Al-Walidain? Mother and father. Some people mix up the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, wherein he says, who is, the question was asked obviously, who is more deserving of my good companionship? What was the answer? My mother. Your mother basically. Who next? Your mother. Who next? Your mother. We've even heard some songs made in that regard, right? It's true. Is that talking of obedience? No. Is that talking of when she is wrong? No. It's talking of your kindness. Man ahakkun nasa bi husni sohbati. Who is the most deserving of my goodness, my kindness, my good companionship? Your mother and your mother and your mother and then your father. Your father will probably slap you, subhanallah, if you are mischievous. I don't think in this generation that would work because the son would come up and roll his sleeves and show his dad the result of all the protein he's been pushing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. By the way, it may not be so healthy. But the point being raised is, you need to know that what is right is right. Be it your mom or your dad or whoever it is. This is Surah An-Nisa. Many people have a problem between their wives and their mothers because they don't know how to... I was about to say play the politics. But they don't know how exactly to manage it. It's something to manage. Your love of your mother will never change. It will increase. It's a different type of love. You can never say, I don't love my mother. Or you are not allowed to be unkind to her, even if she is unkind. Or even if she is wrong, you can respectfully let her know that. But your love for your wife is very different. And you need to understand this. You need to know it. And you need to be able to juggle the two in a beautiful way. Sometimes you might have to protect your wife from the harm of your own mother. And sometimes you might have to protect your mother from the harm of your own wife. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us beautifully regarding the wealth that we leave when we pass away to be just, to be fair, especially to the women and the orphans. The widows are cheated a lot of the times. The orphans are cheated a lot of the times. People want to change the wealth. People want to shortchange them. People want to say, no, no, no. You don't have a share anymore because you know what? Dad gave you when he was alive. Subhanallah. That's a statement that you need to throw out of the window. Because Allah tells you, whatever you gave when you were alive, you gave what was yours. The minute you close your eyes, it's ours. We decide what's going to happen with this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. And there's no question, there's no doubt. What's the point of me failing in the last moments when I'm about to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and my will is totally upside down, completely un-Islamic, totally in the opposite direction of the instruction of Allah. And that's the last thing I needed to do as I left. You're not going to take your wealth with you. Let's go back to those five sons. 
Imagine you didn't block any of them and you followed what Allah told you. And it so happens that 20 years later, there's only one son who always makes dua for you. Who is he? He's the one who regretted that he was a bad son when you were alive. The other four, they forgot you. Subhanallah. Dad was a good man. Dad was a good man is not going to get him into Jannah. Oh Allah, forgive my father. That's what's going to get him into Jannah. Subhanallah. So don't underestimate who's going to be closer to you later on. You don't know. Be fair, be just. You passed your test in the eyes of Allah. Whether you got along or didn't get along with that particular child, it is your child. Some people want to block their brothers and sisters in the case where they don't have children or they don't have male children sometimes. My brother, my sister, you cannot do that. It's not up to you. This is Allah telling you it's justice. This money was ours. This wealth was ours. You came onto the earth zero. You're going to go back zero. Don't worry about what's going to happen. Do it the way we told you and that's it. You will succeed with Jannatul Firdaus. That is Allah. So these are the verses that Allah has repeated. There are other verses that I want to report to you about. In what we read tonight in Surah An-Nisa, Allah speaks about marital discord. It's normal and natural that you might have a few misunderstandings in marriage because you are two totally different people. It doesn't mean I want a divorce. I want out. I want to get out. And you are only married. You need to make an effort, sacrifice, adjust and change on both sides, not just on one. You can't say you're a woman. You need to adjust. Well, if you are wrong, you also need to adjust. You need to correct your bad ways and habits. All the pornography, all the bad friends you have, all the drugs that you've been taking, even if it is weed. Some people think, well, it's okay, it's just weed. Just weed. The only weed we know that's permissible is touch weed. I'm sure you know that, right? Otherwise, you can't say just weed. Weed is weed. Come what may. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Yes, some people speak of the medicinal properties of it, of the cannabis and so on. We're talking of the social smoking of it is totally prohibited in Islam. You need to remember this. Oh, I see people looking at me as though I'm saying something wrong here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. It is so common today that we become wrong to talk about it in the eyes of some. But we will still say it because we have to. So if you have these bad habits, you need to change them. You cannot think to yourself that I don't need to change. You must change. You're the woman. Who are you to say that when the bad habits are yours? You have all relations with all women in the earth on the earth and you tell her to turn a blind eye. Imagine if she were to do that with males, it would be unforgivable. Why the double standards? You correct yourself and you will see what will happen this side as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. What I've said is fair and it is just because Allah speaks about justice. So Allah says, when you have marital discord, do you know what? You need to make sure both of you want to solve the problem. Listen to what Allah says. When there is a problem and the two parties get together, both of them want a solution. If they both want to solve the problem, Allah will grant them the acceptance to solve the problem. Why? Because both of them want to solve it. I'm ready to say, I'm sorry. She is ready to say, I'm sorry. No one is here to try and prove who was right and who was wrong. This is the reality. Let's apologize to each other. Let's never repeat this again and let's move forward. Those are champions. MashaAllah. But if you are here to prove who was right and wrong, you're not going to solve the problem. Allah says, if both of you want to solve it, you will solve it. But if one wants to prove who's right and wrong, you're not going to solve the problem here. Remember this. That's Allah's solution in the Quran. So my brothers and sisters, if you think that you just should get out of a marriage because of a small issue you've had, then you may get into another marriage with worse issues. And you might get into a third marriage with disaster. And you might get into a fourth marriage with even bigger disaster. But who knows, the fifth one might just come right. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. It's not wrong to be married again and again. But the point I'm raising is don't just give up out of a small matter. If it is a major matter, you're being abused and there is something serious that's happening in all meaning with all honesty. And by all means, you have the right to seek help to get out of that abusive situation that is unbearable or something that you feel is really beyond the line. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all happiness, goodness. May Allah grant us bliss, contentment, solution to our problems, the ability to listen, the ability to say, I'm sorry, truthfully. And the ability to solve our matters and problems. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us as a role model for others when they see us they will actually be able to learn a lesson such that we get a free reward for it may allah grant us all jannatul firdaus aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammad wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh